Hey guys, Phil Yumus here, and today we have a tier list video. I don't make these videos too often, so tell me what you guys think about my tier list video. And if you guys are new to the channel because you guys watch tier lists and I don't make them too often, my name is Phil. Some people call me Yumus. I'm a top global player. I ended season one top 100, and currently season two, if you have a few days left, I'm pretty firmly in the top 100. I might climb a little bit more just to secure my spot. I'm not too sure. So that's just a little bit of background about me. I specialize in all defenders, um, as well as uh, Garchomp and Mr. Mime. So those are Pokemon that I have a little bit more knowledge on, but I definitely played the meta. I played solo queue before as well. Uh, I have a solo account that's 2100 plus, and season one, I also had a pretty high solo account as well. But there's all my credentials. Let's get into the tier list. All right, guys, here we go on to the tier list here. As you can see, I have two tier lists. Now, why do I do that? It's because a poke sometimes a Pokemon is very good in solo queue. It's not very good in pro play or like team play, right? And sometimes a Pokemon's very good in team play is not very good in solo. If I tried to blend them together, I think we would make like a very like mushy tier list. So I'm actually just full splitting them up. Left side is for team play and right side is for solo duo trio queue. And I think this is going to have a much more accurate representation depending on what you play. If you're a solo player, you can look at the solo tier list and understand what's the best. And if you if you play with a team or your friends, you can go ahead and go to the left and pick what's best for there. And I have experience in both, so it's awesome. All right, let's start off with a great example. My boy Abzal. So I love him. And dude, in solo queue, he slaps, bro. Abzal's amazing, okay? Because you can secure with him, you can jump around with him. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff. You can pick off targets, assassinate. But in team play, you cannot do that, man. You're not going to be killing a Cinderace, a Venusaur, all right, anytime soon against a coordinated team on Absol. It should be an uh, item like Buddy Bear exists. You jump on a Venusaur, you drop him to like half health, everyone Buddy Barriers, and you now are in the middle of the enemy team, and you're dead. You know, and you're just dead. That's why Absol cannot really be played in team play, because he takes advantage of uncoordinated teams uh, to be able to pick off priority targets. And... That only really happens in solo, you know? That only really happens in solo. There's communication in five stacks. You're in Discord with your friends. You can be like, yo, Abzul, jump in on me. Everyone come back and help. And then there's nothing you can really do against that as Abzul. So there's our first casualty there into the team play tier list. Abzul here. Uh, I'm not going to do these in order. I'm going to kind of do them randomly. Uh, let's do next one up, uh, Machamp. I think Machamp is... Right now, currently in A tier, actually, for team play. Machamp's being uh, played a lot top lane with Slow Smoke. Uh, he's beating a lot of Lucario's in lane. Machamp's a pretty good laner. His Karate Chop is very good for securing. So I think Machamp is an easy A tier Pokemon. Actually, I'm happy for my boy Machamp. He used to be really bad. He's actually pretty decent now. Machamp is also probably going to be A tier for solo, man. All the things he can do in team play, he can do in solo as well. And he's not very team reliant. Uh, he can be played top, solo top, or you can play dual top. You can play him jungle, you know. You can go whatever build uh, your team needs, really. You can go the damage build. You can go the CC build. Machamp, pretty pretty solid Pokemon overall. Next one up, we got Pikachu. Pikachu is another A-tier Pokemon for team play. One of the two attackers in the game that are meta. The two uh, meta attackers are Venusaur and Pikachu. So let's actually do both of those right now. Venusaur and Pikachu are both meta attackers. Um, they both kind of play the same role. Pikachu is a little bit better early game, whereas Venusaur is better late game. So it's whatever your comp wants to play around, right? Venusaur is also hyper carry, whereas Pikachu is not. So they're both easy A tier Pokemon for team play um, because they're required on every team almost, right? And then for solo, I think Pikachu is definitely a little bit worse. Now, my reasoning for this is because in team play, your advantages from Pikachu's powerful early game can be capitalized on. In solo, even if you play Pikachu against a really weak lane and you punish them, and then they're down one or two levels all game, if your jungler doesn't come down bot and they get Dreadnought, all their sins are automatically forgiven, right? Whereas in team play, you don't really, you know, get away with that. In team play, if you're smashing their bot lane, you call down your jungler, you get Dread, and the enemy team stays behind. In solo... You know solo junglers, guys, right? Half the times you have two junglers in solo queue. So it's not really guaranteed on that front. Venusaur, though, I think is always an S-tier Pokemon in solo queue, you know? He's very strong. You can jungle him or bot lane him. If you get fed on uh, Venusaur, you can solo carry games yourself. Um, he's pretty decently tanky. He does a lot of damage. He's really fast. Um, one of our first S-tiers in solo queue. And when you see solo queue, there's going to be a lot of hyper carries S-tier. Because when you play solo duo trio, you need a carry. Because if you, the higher up you go, the worse the teammates they place you with. It, it just sucks how the system's like that, but it's like that. Next one up, let's go ahead and do... Let's do Charizard. Charizard for team play is... I know Charizard recently got buffed, but it's still not crazy good. 
I'm gonna put it at the very bottom of A tier for team play, man. Charizard. Um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna rank these in order. Actually, I'm gonna start ranking them in order. I think Venusaur is probably the best here, and then Pikachu, and then Machamp, and then here. I think this adds up. Yeah. Charizard probably low A tier. He's okay. He's definitely playable. You win games on him. I think he's actually pretty good, but not the best. Not optimal yet. And A tier is like very close to optimal. So I'm gonna put him at the very bottom of A tier. And then Charizard, I think, I think A tier is a good spot for him in solo as well. Some of them, some Pokemon match up, but more of the supports and tanks you're gonna realize do not match up at all. So same thing for Charizard there. You can you usually jungle him. His laning could definitely get punished though. And especially if you're in solo and you have a bad laner, he could get really punished. I might actually put him in B actually. The more I think about it, I think he's probably more B. Next one up, let's go ahead and do Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime is also probably in A tier, probably better than Charizard as a defender bottom when you play him in team play. He plays as a defender. He's very good at securing. He has one of the strongest early games. He couples very well with Pikachu. And then he even couples pretty well with Venusaur because if the enemy does not have a Mr. Mime, you can win the lane for your Venusaur and have him uh, easily scale up. And me being an expert at Mr. Mime, I know all about that. I've been doing that, uh, I wanna say for years, but it's only months nowadays, all right? Mr. Mime in solo, not the best, not the best. Probably somewhere here, probably be behind Pikachu actually. You definitely can't do much on Mr. Mime. You can set up walls, box people in, but if your teammates do not capitalize on it, you're still a support at the end of the day and you don't do much damage. Yeah, there's the whole meme, Mr. Mime does a lot of damage, but he shoots his one combo and then if your team doesn't follow up, um, any whoever you combo is just gonna get out of the stun and then kill you, you know? So there's that. Next one up, let's go ahead and do Eldegross. Eldegross is probably gonna be our first S tier pick um, here. Eldegross is required for almost every single team in team play being the best support in the game. Um, the only strat that does not run Eldegross is the Japanese scoring strat. And yeah, that's it. Every single other strat requires an Eldegross. It's the best support in the game. It's range, so it makes use of muscle band and auto attacks to have a very strong lane. It has good utility with the speed and the shield. It's everything you want from a support, honestly, all right? but it's still a support at the end of the day. So I will have to put it probably around, if not better than Mr. Mime. It might be a little bit better than Mr. Mime actually, because it is just as a character stronger, okay? It's still a support, but as a character, it is just stronger than Mr. Mime, you know? So there's Elder Gross for solo. Next one up, let's do Wigglytuff. Here's another point of contention here. Another S tier pick. Wigglytuff is an S tier defender. One of the strongest defenders with uh, the Sing that you can basically guarantee on people, which is why people are running full heal a lot. Now with Slow Smoke, you can also run Slow Smoke. You can run Eject or Slow Smoke, both to ensure that it lands a Sing. And guaranteed CC is super, super good. Um, one of the major callouts in team play is, yo, he has no full heal. And then if someone has no full heal and you get guaranteed CC on them, they're usually dead. In solo queue, that is not very good. It's still pretty good, I think. It can definitely help your team out and set up. I'm actually putting it at the bottom of A tier, Wiggly, because it's still a tank, and usually teams, even if they're uncoordinated, know when enemies are sleeping, they know to hit them, right? You can use your shield to save teammates and all that. It's actually pretty decent in solo. It's surprisingly good solo for being a supportive character. Next one up, we're gonna go ahead and do Mammal Swine. Mammal Swine is probably somewhere in the B tier, man, in team play, bro. He's not very good right now. There's a lot of tanks better than him. I love him, man. He's fun, but he's just truly not that good. Him getting level, him having to get level five is very, very hard. Um, and his early game is not strong enough like Snorlax to make up for it. Mammal Swine is just a worse Snorlax. There's really no benefits of picking Mammal Swine over Snorlax. Like the CC is like, if you can stick on someone, the CC is pretty good, but then again, it's hard to stick on someone. And then his early game is also not as strong as Snorlax as well too. So it's kind of unfortunate. I love my boy Mammal Swine, but he is just a strictly worse uh, uh, Snorlax. And then in, he's gonna be our first C tier here for solo queue. Mammal Swine's terrible in solo. You're gonna just be stunning people and if your team doesn't follow up, it does nothing. You don't really do damage. If the enemy has full heal, you waste their full heal and then they just laugh in your face. Like his Unite is bad. Mammal Swine's just not a very good character right now, sadly. I love the guy, but he's not a very good character. In the trend of bad characters, let's go ahead and do Decidueye. Decidueye is probably one of the worst characters in the game right now. I'm gonna give Decidueye the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna put him at the bottom of C tier because I have seen some teams start experimenting with him, maybe at the bottom of B tier. 
some teams are experimenting with Decidueye, and I've definitely lost to Decidueye before, you know, and I haven't lost to Abzo before, I don't think. So I'm actually gonna put Decidueye in B tier here. That's a very, that's very generous B tier in team play because this is a very bad Pokemon. Usually you get jumped on by everyone and you die immediately. And you require like a Blissey or like unreasonable amounts of peel. And even when you get all that, it's still not very good. Solo Q, easily the worst solo Q character you can ever pick ever is Decidueye. Like, I, I dude, I can make a list of, of how terrible this Pokemon is. I remember trying to film like games uh, playing Decidueye, like, and I was just getting slapped up, so I would play standard games and get slapped up, just because, like, if your team does not play around you, this Pokemon is terrible, it doesn't matter how good you are, if the enemy team has a Dragonite that unites on you, or a Zerora that jumps on you, it doesn't matter how good you are, you're dead, a Serena jumps on you, you're dead, you can't outplay it, it's unoutplayable, you can never position good enough, you know, to outplay all these threats, these threats are just too unreasonable for you to deal with, so you need, you need help dealing with it. And the last place on earth where you can get peel is solo Q, guys, okay? That is just how it is. So it's a hyper carry, but it's probably the only hyper carry that is bad in solo Q, I think. Speaking of hyper carries, let's go ahead and go into uh, Greninja here. Greninja in team play is not very good as well. I think it's probably better than Mamoswine, though. Mamoswine is really not very good. Greninja is better than Mamoswine. You can play him as a jungler. He's not an optimal jungler right now. Greninja got nerfed a bunch of times. People are still experimenting with Surf or Water Shuriken. He could kind of play both of them pretty good. Um, if you can get ahead early, even in team play, Greninja is a menace. It's just kind of hard to get ahead with him early game because he doesn't have anything to secure the bees. Um, and other junglers are very strong on the bees sometimes. And then uh, they'll get you behind. But you can come to Dreadnought at level 9 as Greninja. It's, it's still it's still tear shit up, bro. It's, it's a beast Pokemon. And then in solo queue, Greninja is easily currently the best uh, S tier Pokemon on the current list right now. Obviously, I think there's going to be other Pokemon better that I'm going to put up there. But Greninja um, in solo queue, bees and all that stuff like is negligible. It's just wh whoever jungler gets there first, right? Whereas in team play, both junglers get there around the same time. And you're almost always ahead on Greninja if you play well on Greninja in solo queue. Next one up, let's do another solo queue Pokemon here. Let's do Talonflame. Talonflame, super good solo queue Pokemon. Probably better than Abzal. Yeah, probably better than Abzal. Uh, I don't know how the change recently just affected him, but I still see Talonflames tearing up solo queue. His kit is just so good. You have lots of mobility, you have lots of damage, um, and you get your Unite back really often. So you can thirst people when you're behind and get um, a lot of levels back. And if you're ahead, you can maintain your lead by uniting away and stuff. So Talonflame is a great solo queue pick. Uh, only really in the jungle again though. All junglers are, are a little bit weaker in solo queue kind of because you might get your jungle stolen, but I'm gonna try not to take that into account. Talonflame is probably better than Charizard maybe? Yeah, I think Talonflame's probably better than Charizard. It's seen in the Japanese strat and some teams still like playing Talonflame jungle. It's okay. I think Talonflame jungle is definitely a very okay Pokemon. Not optimal, but if you play it, I don't think people are going to be too upset with you in team play, right? If you play it in the jungle position. Uh, and some comps revolve around having a Talonflame, actually, like the Japanese scoring strat. So pretty good Talonflame right there. Next one up for team play, let's do Crustle. Crustle right now is currently... Probably better than Crustle, but... I mean, better than uh, Abzo, but in C tier. C tier for Crustle, right? Uh, Crustle is just very bad, like, right now, even in the scoring strats, they don't really run it. They sometimes run Crustle in the scoring strats to counter other scoring strats by stealth rocking the ground and all that. But it definitely needs a lot more experimentation. Um, I've never really lose to Crustles. I don't see it get played too often. I don't think Crustle is that good. Again, it saddens me because I love my boy Crustle, man. I, it sucks that he sucks, you know. Crustle is probably a little bit better in solo. I think he's probably like somewhere uh, behind Pikachu. Sometimes the back caps and all that do matter, and you can steal wins away in games where like Zapdos is really like um, RNG, you know, where both teams don't really get Zapdos. Crustles can do pretty good. Also, Crustle can actually secure Zapdos pretty well. If you go Fluffy Tail and you Stealth Rock Zapdos, there's a good chance no matter what happens, if your whole team is dead even, that you might get Zapdos. So Crustle pretty... Uh, okay, average, slightly below average in solo queue. Next one up, let's do Alolan Ninetales. Alolan Ninetales, um, these are like, see, these are like the the niche, like, 
B tier picks, man. I think there's gonna be a lot of B tier picks in competitive. It's probably somewhere by Greninja here, you know? Sometimes you see teams play A9 as a defender bottom when there's two bottom, two top uh, against three people bottom. A9 is very good at defending bottom. That's all it really does, you know? It scales worse than Pikachu, I think, right? Um, its early game is around the same as Pikachu, but scales worse, so that's why teams don't really play. He's pre she's pretty good at defending, though. You know, defending goals, keeping people off goals, uh, Ninetales is good at. In solo, probably somewhere around there the same. I'd probably say behind behind Pikachu, probably, just because Pikachu can unite so often, and it, it, uh, it has all the benefits of uniting often that Talonflame gets as well. You know, if you're ahead, you can stay ahead. If you're behind, you can try and throw some kills. Next one up, Snorlax, a recent favorite of mine that I picked up. I think Snorlax is definitely at the top of A tier, a very strong defender, um, not as OP as Wiggly, I don't think, but definitely super strong. You guarantee the first Dino because of how strong your secure is, and then depending on how you guys play or what your comp is, you can go for their Dinos and have a really strong early game, and Snorlax never really falls off too much. Late game, you can still engage, block, you can push people off with our score shielding. Just has really... Like, there's no downside of Snorlax. It has a lot of utility. It's all upsides. They're not all crazy good upsides, but they, he does have some crazy good upsides, like an amazing secure. Uh, Snorlax for solo is also pretty decent, I think, man. Uh, I would probably say it's somewhere, like, somewhere over here. Maybe in... No, actually... If you win early game bot, does it matter in solo? It kind of does, I think. It kind of does. I think I might put Snorlax above Wiggly in solo, actually. Yeah, I think it. I think Snorlax just as a, a Pokemon, the power level of Snorlax is just above a lot of these other Pokemon. Its raw numbers are just higher too, right? So I'm gonna put it above Wiggly. Um, chances are, on average, if you win lane, you will win game. You know, like you have a 65% chance to win game or whatever. I know it doesn't feel that way, but um, I think Snorlax is probably somewhere in the eight tier for solo as well. Next, if you if you need if you wanted to play a defender, basically, right? You obviously can't have a team of all attackers, right? So you're gonna need some defenders there, and he's one of the better defenders. Next one up, let's go. Uh, let's Cramrant. I don't know much about Cramrant, but the one thing I know for sure is Cramrant sucks in team play. I have not seen a team make Cramrant work in team play yet. It kind of just feels like a Decidueye. You stand still when you unite, and then everyone knows to throw their abilities on you. And it doesn't really matter how much shielding you get. It is not enough for you to survive, really. So Cramrant is very easy to pick on. Its laning is also not that good nowadays with all with how optimized the meta is. Back then, Cramrant was known for having the best lane, but that was before the meta was super optimized. Now the meta is super optimized. Its lane is not the best. Cramorant in solo, I actually think is decent. I'll probably put Cramorant above uh, Ninetales here. Uh, very good secure with the Hurricane and Surf. You can also with the Air Slash uh, dive combo if you want. Very, very flexible Pokemon. I think it's actually really solid. And the advantages from lane, you actually do see in solo queue because people don't have these optimal, like, perfect bot lanes that you really can't secure over. So in solo, you can probably uh, secure over a lot of people on Cramorant. Next one up, let's do uh, let's do an all-rounder. We haven't done an all-rounder yet, all right? Let's do my boy Garchomp here, bro. Garchomp is easily S-tier when I'm playing it, all right? But sadly, Garchomp is still probably somewhere in, like, the B-tiers if I'm not playing it. Um, I think Garchomp is pretty decent as a top laner now, but it's still kind of a niche pick. Uh, in team play, it's... I would say maybe a little bit better than Ninetales, somewhere in the B tiers, maybe low A tiers if you play good, you know what I'm saying? But on average, Garchomp is power level as a character. Um, you can play him top, but he gets beat by every top laner. Um, some matchups he's okay at. He also doesn't really do anything at Bs. Top laner, you really gotta be strong at the first Bs because that dictates the game and it dictates if your jungler is gonna have Unite or not, you know? And Garchomp can't do anything to help his jungler or secure bees for himself. So Garchomp's probably going to be right there. In solo, I actually think Garchomp is very good, bro. I think Garchomp is very good in solo, actually. I think Garchomp's probably above Machamp in solo. Like, you can just go top. If your team falls behind, you can still flip zap. There's a lot of options you can do. Garchomp is finally, I can truly say, like, good in solo. Like, not only good, I think Garchomp is above average in solo now, you know? It's not crazy S tier, but it's definitely above average. And I love that. And he recently got nerfed, which kind of sucks, but I don't think the nerf is too big anyway, so he's probably going to still be around here. Next one up, let's go ahead and do Serena. Serena used to be S tier, but then they nerfed it. 
So now I think Serena is still okay, but I don't see anyone even experiment with Serena anymore. I'm gonna put Serena actually behind Mr. Mime, actually, bro. I think I don't see anyone play Serena anymore. I don't. I, I haven't seen Serena become really a problem anymore these past few days when I'm grinding. Um, I think the nerf actually did her in pretty well. I'm happy with where Serena is right now. Um, if she's ahead, she's still OP, but that's you should be ahead. I mean, you should be OP if you're ahead on like a melee hyper carry like this, right? So that's a melee hyper carry. Serena in solo is still probably very good, man. Honestly, still probably like a god amongst men. You just dash into enemy team and just completely obliterate them. Uh, I think Serena and Solo probably is above Abzul. Yeah, I love Abzul, but Serena can just do to too many things. Serena can kill prior targets just like Abzul, but she can also stay alive and heal. And then after killing the prior target, go ahead and kill your tank too, you know? So Serena is super good, but the nerf did drop her down from, from the heavens, okay? Back to morality. But Serena used to be S plus tier on like every, on everything. Solo, team play, everything, bro. Next one up, let's go ahead and do Zerua. I actually love Zerua, and I think he's also like a very niche pick right now. Probably better than Greninja and Garchomp. You can play him jungle, you can play him top, and in both of those, he's kind of okay, but he's definitely not like optimal yet. He's not, anyone in A, I think, you can definitely pick, and it'll be okay, but B, it starts getting a little bit suspicious if you pick people in B, you know? And Zerua... Uh, Zara's kind of like where Talonflame is, I think. Zara might might actually be an S. Actually, I'm, a, I'm not an S, I'm A. I think Zara's actually probably an A behind Charizard, I think. I think you probably play Zara behind uh, Charizard and A, yeah. I think there's a fair spot for Zara. He plays Wild Charge, Spark now, and it's still pretty good. It's still pretty good. Zara is going to easily be... For me, I think Zara is better than Greninja, but I think Greninja for most people is better than Zara. So I'm actually gonna put Zara in the S tier for solo queue. Super strong solo carry. You can play him jungle, you can play him top. He does a billion damage. Uh, the only thing that sets him back is his level 10 Unite. But a lot of times you don't even need Unite because when the enemy unites you, you wild charge them and you dodge their Unite. So Zara is super strong. Spark, auto attacks, crits, everything. He does everything you wanna do in a melee kind of jumpy assassin. He's very annoying. Um, and if the enemy team has a good player, you can still play Zara and guaranteed kill him a lot of the time. There's not much you can do about it, you know? Zara is the reason Decidueye is all the way down here. Because if you're the best Decidueye on Earth, I could take someone that is a freshly new 1200 Masters era, and he will, he will make your life a living hell, you know? And that's why Zara is an S tier, and he also carries super, super hard. All right, we're running out of Pokemon. Does it... Th do, do, do the lists not line up? Why don't they line up? I don't even know. Okay. Speaking of uh, good solo Pokemon, next one up. Let's get another S tier in here. Let's get Cinderace. I think Cinderace is easily the top of S tier for the junglers. Super strong hyper carry. Um, it can uh, self peel and blaze kick and flame charge. It's very hard to lock it down. Its unite is great. Its damage is great. Um, its early game is kind of bad, but it's mitigated by the fact that it jungles, right? And if you know how to jungle and you secure some bees with Cinderace, it scales into a monster. Um, I don't have too much experience with Cinderace. I just know she's easily one of the best attackers in solo queue S. Easy hyper carry. Cinderace in competitive right now or five stacks is also pretty good. I see a lot of teams experimenting with Cinderace. I don't have much experience with Cinderace on my team because uh, my jungler doesn't play Cinderace, but I have seen enough top teams play Cinderace to know that Cinderace is good. So I'm gonna put Cinderace actually at the top of A tier. I think that's a very safe spot for Cinderace, yep. Um, now, what my team does play jungle, my boy Assassin Dave plays Gardevoir. Gardevoir is actually a very good jungler right now in team play, I think. Especially with how it's played. Um, it's I don't think it's as good as Cinderace or Snorlax or Pikachu or Venusaur. I'm going to put Gardevoir right here. Not a lot of teams are uh, um, playing Gardevoir yet, but they're starting to pick it up and try it. And I've seen some of the things my boy Dave has done, and I think Gardevoir is definitely meta for sure. Is it as meta as Pikachu and Venusaur, the staples of bot lane? No. Is it as meta as Cinderace and Snorlax? Probably not. But it definitely has the chance to be very, very good. But it's very hard to pilot. It's hard to play Gardevoir, too. So that's that's one thing setting it back to. to because if you want to play like Cinderace, not Cinderace, if you want to play Pikachu at 100% capacity, it's pretty easy. But if you want to play Gardevoir at 100% capacity, it's actually pretty dang hard, right? Gardevoir in solo is also pretty okay. But I'm going to put it at the top of B. It suffers from a Decidueye syndrome where people could still jump on you and kill you. But um, you have the benefit of having a stronger early game. Um, and Decidueye is like, has a terrible early game, scales into a god, 
but when it's a god, like anything kills it. So that's the problem. Garvar is kind of like the same, but it doesn't have a terrible early aim. Garvar's early aim is actually pretty good as a jungler. I wouldn't really want to lane Gardevoir though, so you gotta keep that in mind. Next one up, let's do the new Pokemon here, Trevenant. Trevenant. Trevenant, Trevenant, Trevenant. Nah, I love my boy Trevenant. I think he's actually decent, but decent is not good enough in five stacks, okay? I think Trevenant is actually probably right here. Probably below Garchomp. Has a lot of weaknesses, right? It has a lot of issues. If you wanna play it as a defender bottom, it's very hard to get level five. And level five is really when it starts popping off. But his early game is not like terrible. His early game is like, it's not as good as Snorlax and all the other defenders, but it's not terrible, you know? You won't automatically lose lane by picking Trevenant. So I think it's safe to put him behind Garchomp here in B tier. And then Trevenant in solo queue is like, horrendously bad man i'm gonna put it at c man it is so bad in solo queue it's probably better than mammal swine because it has a little bit more damage and self-sustain right but you cannot pick pokemon like mammal swine and trevenant these like supportive like tanks in solo queue it, it, it you're in for a bad time it's just gonna be you dying over and over again with a bunch of people hitting you you know and it's gonna feel like you're doing the most and it doesn't work out Next one up, let's go ahead and do Greedent. Greedent is a, definitely another A tier. It's played in a lot of cringe strats with scoring and all that. I think Greedent's probably above. Greedent's probably above. Greedent's probably right here, above Gardevoir, I think. Greedent's played in a lot of the Japanese strats that focus on scoring and invading and messing with the enemy jungle because you really can't punish the Greedent. He kind of just goes in your jungle and 50 50 you for everything, all right? If you get lucky, you can get it. If you don't get lucky, he gets it and you're, you're having a bad time. Once he gets his Covet, it's impossible to catch him. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to die on Greedent. He just runs around the enemy jungle, steals their stuff. He has the most annoying playstyle ever, but I have to acknowledge he's very strong, you know? So that's why he's in A. Greedent in solo, probably do okay on him. I don't think he's bad, but I think a lot of his advantages are not used in solo. Um, you definitely could tilt the enemies though by just going into the jungle, like, but I don't know. Greedent is somewhere over here for me for solo, I think. Somewhere over here. Probably behind Cramorant, I think. Probably somewhere over here. Yeah, he is kind of like crossed away. He has like niche advantages that like are hard to make use of, you know? Um, but in team play, they could actually make use of those advantages. But Crusto Boy, they cannot do it for that. We still have a lot of defenders left. Clefable is not in the game, so we don't need to do that one. Blastoise. Blastoise, another kind of like weird niche Pokemon. Um, it's not the best defender. It needs level 5, just like Mammal Swine. Um, but its payoff has, is way more uh, when it gets to level 9, whereas Mammal Swine gets nothing at level 9 because his Unite sucks. So I'm going to put him above Trevenant. It's a lot of the defenders are in this weird niche, you know, if, if you don't have a instant early game powers defender, you're automatically bad in team play and that kind of sucks. Blastoise is probably the best defender in solo queue though, like he's like a really, really good defender. He can set up team fights, you know, he can hit five man unites. He has a lot of value in that unite, you know, and if you can use that value, he's awesome. Uh, he can surf down uh, from top lane, you can play him top, you can play him bot. I probably wouldn't play him jungle, but you can play him jungle too if you want. Once you get level nine, you're a menace. Your laning is actually pretty okay in solo queue standards, if not above average. So Blastoise, easy A tier in solo queue. Speaking of solo queue, let's go Gengar. Gengar is gonna be S tier in team play because of his recent buffs. I'm kidding, Gengar is terrible. Um, Gengar is probably a little bit better than Abzul, no. No, I think Gengar's probably the worst. No, uh, I'll give Gengar the benefit of the doubt BC recently got buffed and Abzu didn't. But Gengar is just terrible. Exactly the same as Abzu. All the advantages you bring to the table of one-shotting people and, you know, doing all this instantly gets denied with Buddy Barrier. And most Gengars don't even run Buddy Barrier as well, too. So not only is he bad, he can't run the OP item. Like, he's just so bad. He's so bad in team play. Like, every time we're against a Gengar, like... It's just a free win, you know? Like, a lot of Pokemon just, like, remove... If, if there's certain Pokemon on the enemy team in team play, and you pick Gengar, there's nothing you can do to have an impact in the game. Like, if I'm playing Slowbro, and you're playing Gengar, there's nothing you can do. You know? You jump in, I surf you, or I unite you, and then you're immediately dead. Whereas, these other junglers, like... Um, let's say Zeroar, right? Like, you jump in, I unite you, you still, you still have Discharge on, or you can Wild Charge and Dodge, you have some counterplay. But Gengar just does not bring enough to the table. Gengar and Solo is actually pretty decent though, man. 
I think Gangrel Soul is probably somewhere by Charizard. Maybe a little bit better than Charizard. The resetting on kills is a pretty interesting mechanic. You have a lot of damage, you have a lot of mobility, and you can get really big in solo queue, man. And then your Unite is actually pretty interesting. You can Unite and go back cap too. Um, for some, you know, uh, weird plays where if you're down a little bit of points, you can go and steal a win. I think Gengar's okay in solo. Next one up, we got Dragonite. Dragonite, I think, is still very, very good in solo, man. The fact that you can secure everything on Dragonite, I'm actually going to put him up, maybe not above Talonflame, right behind Talonflame. You can still secure everything. The damage of Hyper Beam was only nerfed versus enemies, not versus objectives. And in solo queue, where your your whole five-man team might not be at dread, it's important to get that shit done as quick as possible and to ensure that you can secure it, you know? Because you don't want to waste all that time. If you go bot as a jungler in solo, right? And it's like a 3v5 or whatever, and you lose dread, so you lose dread, and then top lane dies as well too, and all that. It, it's terrible, man. So Dragonite really good in solo queue, and it's range as well too. Just don't play Outrage. I love Outrage, but it sucks. Dragonite in team play has, dude, just like Serena, man, has not been seen yet. Has, has not really been seen anymore since the nerfs. So I'm gonna actually gonna put it right by Serena. These both were S tier picks that got brought down to reality and. Bottom or, bottom or, yeah, bottom of A tier probably is reality. So this is like the reality section. Wow, we have not talked about Blissey yet, right? Blissey is an S, no, I'm kidding. Blissey is also another terrible Pokemon in team play, sadly. It's just be, Blissey is only bad because Eldegross is so oppressively good. If Eldegross was not in the game, Blissey would be better. But since Eldegross is in the game, it makes Blissey super, super bad. Blissey is probably a little bit better no, probably worse than Decidueye, actually. Because even teams that are testing Decidueye don't run Blissey, I think, right? So, Blissey is just... It's not bad Pokemon, it's just not as good as Eldegross. And you only have room for one support. So, do you want the OP support, or do you want the kind of good one, right? But in Solo Queue, it's completely different. Actually, no, it's not. Solo Queue is still the same. It's still worse than Eldegross. And it's still worse than Mr. Mind. And it's worse than Trevenant. And it's worse than Mammal Swine. And it's worse than the Sejuai. Okay, Blissey is probably the worst Pokemon for Solo Queue. Like, no, actually, I would actually argue that Blissey is better than the Sejuai. In solo, uh, in duos and trios, maybe you can make use of it with a duo partner with Cinderace or whatever. But you can duel with a, a support, right? Or you can duel with another carry. You know what I'm saying? And then you just win more. So Blissey, firmly in the bottom of C tier, sadly there. And then we have the dog Pokemon itself, Lucario. I'm not joking this time. Lucario is easily an S tier Pokemon. Uh, probably worse than Wiggly though. I think this is pretty fair spot for Lucario. Lucario has been meta since its release and it will stay that way. Even after close combat nerfs, people will still play Lucario. It has too much mobility. It's too strong on Bs. Like there's, Lucario has no weakness. Lucario's weakness is his weakness, okay, Lucario, is that his Unite is average. That's his weakness. If your weakness, if the, if the weakest thing about you is that one of your traits is average, you're cracked. And that's why Lucario is easily an S tier. Lucario is not as strong in solo because you don't get to take advantage of his 1v2 uh, potential top and him being a strong top laner. So Lucario is probably worse than Absol in solo, I think. Probably somewhere over here. His advantages are not um, used too much. Uh, he's still strong. If you're a good Lucario in team play, you're definitely going to be a good Lucario in solo queue, and you can still carry. But for the average player, I think it's probably worse than Absol. And Slowbro. Slowbro. Let's not end off on Slowbro. I love my boy Slowbro. Slowbro is currently a super strong defender right now. I would probably put Slowbro above Greedent. Um, the big three or four defenders right now bottom is Wiggly, uh, Mr. Mime, Snorlax, and Slowbro. And Slowbro has one of the strongest lanes. The strongest lane in the game is Slowbro, Pikachu, and Eldegross. And they all three run Muscle Band, and then they just attack you to death, basically, with range attacks, right? Um, and then late game, Slowbro, Slowbro doesn't really need levels. Even if you're low level late game, um, you're still very useful. So you can funnel all your farm into your team, be really low level, and then just unite one person and get them killed. And that's good enough. That's honestly good enough. And it's super, super tanky. You can run the Amnesia build. You can run the Potion build. You can run Slow Smoke. A lot of options with Slowbro. Slowbro in team play, is, I mean, in solo play is none of that. Like, it is literally none of everything I said. Slowbro in solo is probably below Mr. Mime, actually. Like, 
All the advantages I just mentioned never get seen in solo queue, really. But it's still probably better than Trevin. Maybe I'll put it at the top of C tier. Uh, no, I, th I, think, I think bottom of B is probably correct. Last but not least, Sylveon. Sylveon had a crazy release. One of the only Pokemon to get hot fixed because it was that strong back in the day. But now it is, it is played in the attacker role usually, not jungle. And if you had to choose between Venusaur, Pikachu, and Sylveon, you are never going to pick Sylveon. And that is Sylveon's problem. Because of that, Sylveon is probably... Sylveon is probably right here. Right above Trevenant here, I think, is probably a good spot for Sylveon. It's just... Like, it's, a, it's like a hybrid of Pikachu and Venusaur, right? Venusaur has great late game, Pikachu has great early game. Sylveon has like a mix of both. And no one wants that, apparently. So no one's playing Sylveon, and they rather get good early game or good late game. They don't like choosing them. Sylveon, um, probably about the same for solo queue, somewhere in the B tier. Probably still below Pikachu, I think. Because Pikachu can spam Unite, so it's still better than Sylveon, I think. But the benefit of Sylveon is that you get that level 8 Unite. And with level 8 Unite, if you're winning your lane really hard, you can actually transition that um, to winning a Rotom or a Dread. Um, from as a laner, which is pretty dang hard because uh, getting Unite as a laner before the first objective is almost impossible uh, unless you're just completely turbo thumping them, right? But in that case, you can play anything and win. But yep, here's a look at my tier list. Uh, what do you guys think about it? Let me double check it, make sure I agree with everything. Uh, I, think I agree with about everything here. Yep, solo, all these guys are bad. Um, team play, all these guys are good, all these guys are bad. Any glaring mistakes that I don't notice right now? Hmm, no real glaring mistakes that I notice. Maybe, maybe we move this down one actually. We we'll probably move this down one, move this up one. Yeah, somewhere like this kind. Of, this looks about right to me. This looks about right to me. Sometimes defenders are ranked pretty high as well in solo because obviously every team needs one, but. I'm not going to value them as highly as these because even if your team has no um, defenders, if you're good enough, you can carry on all these Pokemon. But if your team has no attackers, you're not good enough to carry with these defenders. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's that's my opinions on the meta right now. The season's ending soon. Tell me what you guys think if you guys agree with the list. Um, and then I'll pull a Spraggles here at the end and I'll mix up the list at the very end so that people don't know what's going on. So Mr. Mime, S tier, Lucario, C tier, Blissey, another S tier. Uh, Gardevoir S tier, Zerua S tier, Greedent is terrible, Charizard is terrible, Dragonite is terrible, Garchomp is top of A tier for some reason, Blastoise is B tier, Mamoswine is even better than Garchomp because he's an ice type, uh, Greninja, Greninja is a little bit weaker than Crustle, and then Crustle is going to be in the bottom of S tier. Okay, let's mix up the solo queue now. Solo queue, obviously the best solo queue Pokemon is Decidueye, followed up with Slowbro obviously. And then Trevenant is an easy A tier pick. Garchomp is still C tier in, right now for the end of the video. Uh, Lupario, uh, a little bit less than, a little bit worse than Sylveon, sadly. Uh, Mammal Swan, one of the better solo queue Pokemon here, gonna be in the A tier. And Cramorant, worst Pokemon in the game. I hate Cramorant. Uh, and Snorlax, no, no, never mind. Snorlax is the real worst Pokemon in the game. Best one in my game, Blissey. Blissey, best for solo queue. All right. There's a look at the tier list. All right, hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like on the video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.